Oh, what? You thought I was going to miss a Sunday? No, I told you I'm not missing a single episode this year, all right? It's currently 8.30 p.m. in Perth, okay? And it's Sunday where I am. So if it's not Sunday where you are, doesn't matter, mate. This came out on a Sunday where I am. That's the only thing that matters. Welcome to the podcast. We've got a banging episode with one of my favorite comedians, Amos Gill. Uh, it's really, really funny. We go places. It's... Uh, Look, we circle back around to some very important topics by the end of this thing. It's definitely worth uh, watching the entire thing. This is a really good episode. I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it. See Amos Gill live. See me live. Loosebeers.com. I don't know Amos's website. You can figure it out. Enjoy the episode. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode... I can't remember of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm joined by... Very special guest, good friend, one of the best comics uh, in Australia, I think. That's nice, mate. I'm, I'm not really here that often, but I'll take it. When he's in Australia, the standard goes up. He makes a big impact. <laughs> we'll say what a, that. What a, what a talent pool we've got as well. Yeah. Easy. Oh, yeah. You watch the Melbourne Comedy Festival Gala and you just think, oh, how can I cut it in this market? I know. It's Why tough. do I start off bitter immediately every time? I don't know why I have to, but here we yeah. are. Yeah. Well, look, Amos Gill is his name. Let's get your Amos name out. Gill. Amos Gill. Uh, and he's one of, uh, one, of, one of the comics that every time I see what you're doing, I just go, Fuck. I, really? I want to do that. What, what is it about what I'm up there doing? Uh, to being, roughly 20 to 30 people in a bad pub? Uh, being not here yeah. in this country, oh, I yeah. just see that and I go, man, if I could sell... At the moment, my, since coming back from surgery, my dreams have just started again. Oh. Before it was like, oh, I'm going to do Madison Square Garden before I'm 50. Right, right. Now before, it's that's like... That's pretty manageable. I think it's possible. How does you getting your fucking jaw cut off Change the 50 timeline. Well, it no, it just, uh, it was, you know what it was? It was the four years of despair. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and and, like, and okay. just, the and dreams just slowly yeah. move back. You want to know a guy who's been wrestling with some dark times? He's got Epictetus <laughs> hanging around. If you see a dude buy a lot of stoic books, just be like, you are right, mate? <laughs> hey? Yeah. Hey, you got a bit of, bit of Marcus Aurelius there? You know what's, you know what's, uh, when he's really going through it is when, with, oh, when yeah. his handwritten notes. I didn't want to mention that, but he, he's, he's written a, a, a lot of notes and then sort of related it to his own life, like <laughs> underlined, just like the surgery you've had. Hang yeah. hang in there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Go away, yeah. Andre. So that's, that's where I was at, yeah. and now things are, are looking up. So now the dreams are starting to come up. So I think Madison yeah. Square Garden before I'm 50 will return. I, you know, I did Madison Square Garden with Jim. Wow. Not the greatest of venues you've ever been to. Not to be disrespectful to Madison Square Garden. But, yeah, it's um, definitely not a comedy give, venue. Well, they give, yeah, and, they, and, and the backstage rider was a bowl of M&Ms in a, in a cardboard like bowl. What, all of the colours? or They did even... all the colours. Jim doesn't do any of that fucking yeah. nonsense. Look, he's, I'll say this about Jim Jeffries. He's kept his, his feet on the ground. He just eats a standard pack of M&Ms. But I remember thinking, like, fuck, this would be a little bit more glam. But it's... Mm. I mean, then again, it was the it was the... Madison Square Garden Theatre, not the main room. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's a that's a maybe so that could be my that's new a goal. Step down. I'll that's... go. I'll move down to Madison Square Garden Theatre before I'm. 50. Well, I used to give him shit about it because like, yeah, we yeah. did MSG, and I'm like, mate, I've told a joke in the MCG toilets, but I haven't played the MCG. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like, there's always a side when you start your career in stand up, you'll be at like the Enmore Theatre. Yeah. But you're in a broom covered to twenty, and people are like performing at the Enmore. Yeah, that's that is not it, like is just. It? I reckon save it until you can play the fucking end more yeah like, I think that's so. why I just stay out in the Irish pubs yeah you don't want to you don't because here's another thing about doing what we're talking about is there's big theatres and often these big theatres have much smaller yeah. rooms and I think that not only is it literally like, like where they store props and yes. they move them out for the festival because they know losers like yeah. me would be like I want to sign at the end more <laughs> yes. I, I, I think what's really well, bad Athenaeum. about that is your your fans who have bought tickets get really excited for you, <laughs> especially when they arrive. They go, oh my God, he's made it. Look, they get into the beautiful foyer. This is amazing. This is a 300-year-old yeah. theatre. And then they go, no, 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 upstairs. Yeah. Go, upstairs go up around there, the corner. And then I walk out and I'm like, guys, take a seat on the uh, Maltesers boxes <laughs> that the theatre's been storing. <laughs> <laughs> the out-of-date food that they didn't manage to sell. Yeah, but I mean, like, dude, uh, you know, you and I both have a love of the United States and doing yeah. stand-up over there. And I say it all the time. It's like so culturally important to them where I don't think it is for us. Like, yeah, I, that's when I performed in New York and I've, I haven't done it much. I've did, I did three club spots and, but the difference was 
the audience was so educated on what the, yeah, is they expected watch shit of them. all the time, and they know what's yeah exactly. They know they've got to bring it also, yeah. and all, and they watch a lot of comedy, so they're like, oh, let's see some takes in the news, and that and they're yeah. kind of measuring you against. Oh, we've already heard some topics, so you better be good. Yeah. Whereas Australia at the festivals, particularly here at Perth. Australia is like, we'll see, oh, it's like most average punters, and I'm not talking about my fans, but the average punter is like, oh, the comedy festival's yeah, yeah. on, who should I see? And then they pick I'll tell you who I their favourite. Because Adelaide's my base, Adelaide's my base. Yeah. To, I, I think like I don't have fans, I've learnt that. Yeah. What I am is I'm like the Ferris wheel at the show. They're like, <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily say you're a fan of the Ferris wheel, but yeah. you're like, well, it's on. I go every year. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That, I know that the Adelaide Fringe is on because I took a ride on Amos Skill for a period. Yeah. And then okay. I come out of the festival and yeah. I'm like, I've put on a big show. Would you guys come? And they're like, nah, mate, we'll, we'll, we'll see you in March. We're Amos Skill there. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're Amos Skill is, it's like having a Dagwood dog. You go, we only do it there. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's true. Not a, that's not a food for the rest of the year. Yeah. And you love the Dagwood yeah. when you're having it. I have a guilty pleasure for yeah. that one night where they're like, what awful things has he got to say about trans and women's football now? <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. year I combined the both. Mm, like the like the new mayor of Perth. Did yeah, you see what oh he had to say about slow motion I wish football? That he, but it's like I wish that he just it was like yeah, that women's tennis isn't as exciting. And I mean, especially it. now that is Serena Williams even in it. Then, but all the tennis sucks. There's like there's no Federer, there's no Nadal, mm. like Novak Djokovic is gone. Like, yeah, there, it's the reserves to literally anything else. That's yeah. running right. Does, can That's you, true. Are you a tennis can, guy? Uh, I I I get into it when Nick Kyrgios is in trouble, and yeah. then he goes, "I'm not apologising," <laughs> and I go, "Let's go, Kyrgios," and then I'm out. I have like a fleeting interest in tennis because my cousin's world number four hundred. Yeah. Um, and is he making a living no, off that? She. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, well, that's much less exciting. Yeah, sure. Don't worry about it. Don't even answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It's like a, it's an awful. I don't think she actually like. I don't think she even has a dream. Of mm. being a tennis player anymore. It's just that her dad is funding her to travel around the world. Oh, well, you and got so to she do has it. to keep play- She has to keep her world ranking under a thousand yeah. to stay in Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like a comedy film. Where I she's can't like, lose my tan. She's like, I just need enough ranking points that I yeah. can keep eating Serrano ham. <laughs> <laughs> so she lives good. the best life. Yeah, because like to be an actual top one hundred player, all the mm. pressure to like be good. Yeah, you, and you need the top 500 to, to, to make a be, living. Yeah, to make a living to, so that they can be a top 100. And if there's no bottom down. The pyramid, you need the pyramid. Yeah. yeah. And then my, my uncle is a farmer yeah. and uh, he's like, he makes good money selling almonds. Yeah. And he just takes some of that wealth and he gives it to his daughter and his wife. And, and that's, like, that's what you should do as own. a rich person, is you should just fund someone that enter- either your children's <laughs> dreams or just a guy that you personally find entertaining <laughs> there's not enough sponsorship anymore like medici family style where you get like wouldn't you why, love why can't i get sponsored by just a rich guy why do i have to oh, this, i, I actually, have to sell fucking pube shavers i've got to be honest with you i have found that oh jim no 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 not no jim. oh so okay. i was gonna so i made friends with this guy called jeff he's like my best mate now mm. He's a comedy fan, yeah. He's, and he likes only dark comedy. And he okay. saw me at a show, yeah. And thought, and, and to be honest with you, I went pretty rough. And yeah. I was doing this routine about Down syndrome Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> but the premise of the joke is they make a Down syndrome Barbie doll, but they don't make a Down syndrome Ken doll. Mm. And I go, now that means that we're living in a parallel universe somewhere, <laughs> where regular Ken. This is a really high level. <laughs> I go, so regular Ken, right? Without yeah. Down syndrome, is fucking. <laughs> <laughs> this, this vulnerable yeah. Down syndrome. Yeah, she's yeah. look. She's don't get me wrong. She's very attractive because mm. even Down syndrome Barbie has a perfect figure. But Mate. he's a rapist, is the joke. Yeah, yeah. Now some people don't go with me on this. This guy loved it, and then we started like That's hanging funny. out. He sold his company for two hundred million dollars. Yeah, he owned a drug and alcohol rehab center, despite mm. being like somewhat of a nefarious drug taker himself. And um, he goes, I've got no kids. Uh huh. And Would you be my son? No family. He goes, I literally just, like, you don't have enough content out there. Mm-hmm. He goes, you're not famous. I don't know why. I, I see, think all he of goes, those things. I want to see your shit. Yeah. He goes, so I'll just, like, how about I start producing some of your shows? Yeah. But the problem with it is, is he's like, I'll pay for your first special. He's like, but we need more retard jokes. And I'm like, now that's, <laughs> now that's starting to feel the opposite way where I'm mm. like, mm, now you're, like, 
I can't. That makes me want to go back to the woke. Yeah. Where I'm like, uh, just let me do anything. Yeah, that's like. Uh, do you do you reckon like the like the Sistine Chapel, you know, that'd be like put a few retarded angels <laughs> in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like I like a I like a Down syndrome angel on the roof. <laughs> Mike Lange is like, look, I'll, I'll give you one where it's like you can't quite tell. Put it, put a nice <laughs> pair of tits in the corner just for me. Well, that's the thing is that the rich are no longer classy, mm. and so everything they sponsor sucks. Yeah. That's the problem that we have in the world is that yeah. when the billionaire class used their money to build beauty, mm -hmm. the world was actually a better place. Yeah. But now, now they're I, making I, bunkers. I, they just make bunkers and go to space. And, and listen, anyone who you've seen my, you haven't seen my show, but I, the reason they're going to space is because Epstein's Island was shut down and now they have to have somewhere else to well, take their Is victims. it illegal up there? I don't know. I mean, it's international waters. So, <laughs> as I've been saying in my show, in space, no one can hear you scream. And that's all that matters <laughs> to the elite cabal. <laughs> Man, I had I need to talk about the gig that I had did last. Yeah, you told night. me you told me that you bombed, and I was very excited about this. So I've had a great run in Perth. I've been doing my shows. The first shows yeah. I've been doing since March last year. Yeah. Uh, and last night was my final show, and I had like. Look, and this is your your own audience. My own my own audience, but I also shame on, shame on you. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. Uh, I had my final night of Perth Fringe was four gigs, four mm. amazing gigs. I got to do the Comedy Lounge twice, yeah, good club. early show and the late show, and then in between that, I got to do my show. Uh -huh. So I do the Comedy Lounge and I fucking annihilate. I'm like, I'm, I'm great. I do my show, crushed, best show of the run. I'm like, dude, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Then I go back to the Comedy Lounge and I fucking crush again. I'm, I'm the greatest comedian of all time. Then I've got a 10.30 show that's the dark comedy Show. Yeah, it's, okay, I've already got some issues with this. Yeah. First of all, I don't like dark comedy shows because I'm like, I do that at the 6 p.m. show anyway. <laughs> I'm like, where were you cowards for all the other shows? This, but this is the this is the thing. Okay, yeah. I didn't have to change my set for the dark comedy show, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that it's going to go better because I'm giving them exactly what they paid for. Because when I do my stuff at the comedy lounge, generally I'll do well, but there's a few mums that are like, this is horrible, and oh, yeah, I yeah. agree with them. Fair enough. It's <laughs> not for you. We want Matt Rife. Yeah. And you're like, look, I'm trying to get handsome. I'm on my way and then it's over for you. Yeah, you yeah. when say. I get the braces off yeah. and I start hitting the gym a bit more, yeah. I, I start eating even more solid then, food, yeah, yeah. Then, then I'll start talking to women. And... So these guys have, have come to the show, uh, to the dark show, and yeah. they're expecting, let's be quite frank, to hear probably some, what, genocide material, rape material. Mate, I get up this there. Is the, this is the billing of the show, this, right? Say whatever you it's want. Act, literally, the, the guy running the gig, great guy, sends me three paragraphs of, like, here's how you prep the audience. Of Tell them it's going to be fucked. Tell them it's yeah, going to be yeah. this. Tell them it's going to be that. I get up there, and I start doing the same jokes I've been doing and crushing with. It's silence. They look at me with fear like, oh, so you think? I thought maybe they were like, no, 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 you're not going hard enough. You're also it no, was too much for them. It was way too much. I have, I did 15 minutes. Yeah. There were 30 people there. Four people laughed at points. Uh, yeah, the yeah, rest yeah, of yeah, them, yeah. literally, <laughs> I sat there in silence for a minute, and that was the biggest laugh that I got because I got 12 minutes oh, yeah, into it, and I just, right. I, you know, when you're, you're, you're like I bombed time. with style. You know, when you're bombing so hard that you just stare at them, like, I'm not stopping. Well, I, I had a guy the other night give me this one. Mm. He crosses his arms yeah. as I was doing, I was doing the Barbie routine. Mm -hmm. And he just goes, move on, mate. <laughs> and, and, and I was like this, a oh, what? And he goes, move on. No one's enjoying it. Read the room. Not move on. Was and, he right? And, well, that's the thing is I was like, I'll find out. And yeah. I, I went to give it a bit of, I think some people are. And this woman goes, I'm not. <laughs> And so I was like, well, we've got two vocal people saying to move on. But normally you can have a bit of fun mm. and you want to play. I was tired yeah. and I just, I was just in a bad mood. Yeah. And I just went, move on to what, cunt? Yeah. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, I yeah. went, oh, Ooh, that was, I got angry. I've got, was, I was real anger. Mm. And I was like, what, what should I move on to, Your Highness? Why don't you write me a script? Yeah. I was unaware that, you know, I just answered you all beck and call. So what should we move on to? And then at that moment, I looked at him and I could tell he was like, he actually didn't hate me that much. He was just kind of like, he just let out because it was so awkward, move on. Mm. And it was, dude, so same thing. So he thought he was trying to help you. So silent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, and then I just went, what, what should we move on to? Because I've moved on yeah. and this is what we've moved on to. Still silence. And then I just went, all right then. Down syndrome brat stoles. <laughs> <laughs> and like... 
<laughs> it kind of like punctuated yeah. a bit, but dude, this gig just took a because at that point no one liked you. Yeah. And I'm one of those people like something you just don't like me anymore, and then it's not funny. And there was a couple who came backstage. Yeah. I'm just sitting there on my phone. Yeah. The crowd is walking out past me and there's like just a curtain there. And yeah. I do this thing where I go because I don't want to hear them walking and going, oh, I thought that was very average. It you is, yeah, yeah, when oh, when you're I can't when you're hearing the 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 opinions <laughs> that they think you can't hear. He started out strong, but yeah. I didn't know what <laughs> oh, he's not very funny overall. And this couple came back. And I couldn't see them enter at first, and yeah. they just felt, they put a hand on my back, <laughs> and they slow rubbed my back like this. It was so much. And she goes, "Sorry, doll." Oh no! Goes, we saw you last year, and it was packed. The room was full, and oh no, goes, the sales as well. Yeah, and she goes, "Oh, you know, I don't know what happened this year. It just wasn't <laughs> the same." So yes. that not even we liked it and no. they're wrong, just we also didn't we, like it. Just Sorry. like, this was so horrible. <laughs> As opposed to where it had been before. We're oh, wondering, man. is everything okay with you? Oh, that's And that rough. one, like, if th that got me way more than the guy who, like, hated me. Because yeah. I was like, I've, I've let them down. They, they believe I'm, like, ill. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, I'm going through some horrible... Disappointed horrible, fans. Disappointed people yeah, that came along that's to the horrible. body program. Yeah, I've had a lot of shockers over here. But I mean, obviously you get some good ones. Mm. But I really think there is nothing better than sticking back. When I was younger, I would definitely change a bit more and go, all right, maybe tone that down. Tone now, I down. stayed in the pocket. I yeah. did what I was paid to do. Yeah. I was like, they were hating me. And I literally told them, I said, you guys have bought a fucking spicy meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm giving it to you. you know and what? you're like, oh, it's a bit too hot. I looked, there were two girls that were loving me. Mm -hmm. I went, these two girls are loving me. This woman over here, she fucking hates it. Yeah. And she goes, I do. <laughs> and I said, and you know what? Now I'm only performing to these two people and the rest of the 20 out of you can get fucked. Oh, the full hostage. And I move into my Stephen Hawking yeah. bit where I, it's a new bit. Yeah. And I just, I just, I was so upset because I did it to my audience and it annihilated and it was a current news it's a current yeah. news thing so i'm like i'll put it out as a clip didn't hit record on yeah. my fucking camera oh, so i'm so like got this. no matter what i do i have to get it on film and i just did it to them and it ate shit <laughs> the whole time <laughs> and i just did it just to practice the bit i'm up there going you know i don't i'm not saying that he definitely didn't do it i'm just saying i'm it's hard to imagine how he did yeah you Look, know, all like, I think is like, man, just watching him push through the sand does go to show how good young pussy must be. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did they do? Did they duct tape him to an ATV to open the remote control? How did they get him there? For me, it's like, because the joke I've been doing on shows, I go, my mate said he got a blowjob, and in my head, some girl unplugged his computer chip and blew it up like a 64 game that had glitched. <laughs> And then plugged him back in and flicked it on and off again. <laughs> I was I was up there going, look, maybe that's why he's got that expression on his yeah. face all the time because one hundred percent of his effort went into moving a single digit into a minor, <laughs> and then he got stuck. And I'm doing this, and I'm holding it. No one's laughing. Oh, just, just absolute <laughs> just, silence. Even the people that were loving me were like. Oh, what would can't. have been amazing is if you didn't see there was a severely disabled man and he's like, ha, 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 ha. Like, <laughs> Look, I, my favourite ever that I've seen like this is this guy goes, there was a gig in Adelaide that was famous because there was a severely disabled man that came every week. Yeah. His carer took him and he loved stand-up. Yeah. And he was in a lot of pain. Mm. And so throughout the show, he would always be like this. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, but we just knew. What? Moaning in pain. Just moaning in pain. Oh, but no. we were like, we all knew. So yeah, we, and fine. the audience knew. Yeah. So I was like, just, you, he's good. He's enjoying this, man. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's, he's not like he's heckling even. He's just in pain. So you do the set. Oh, that's horrific. But there was an out-of-towner who came. Yeah. And he starts to MCing. He's like, what's going on, mate? How are you? Blah, blah. Then he hear, ah. Oh. And he goes, what's that? Go on, say it again. <laughs> oh, you're a coward. <laughs> and so we're all like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. I hope he moves on. Anyway. 10 minutes go by, he's going again. Ah, uh, and he goes, nah, that's it. Nah, who, who was it? Go on. He goes, are you fucking, someone dying back there? Uh, yes. Right? And we're, everyone's like, uh-huh. And then he goes to the break and then Craig Egan, the runner of yeah. Adelaide Comedy, puts the lights up so everyone can find their way to the toilet. Oh, no. And you just watch the host 
see the person in the wheelchair and he just slides like this <laughs> down the thing and he was like, I can't go back on. I can, I can never <laughs> return so ever again. He's yeah. like, I can't even see the second I've done half. shit like that before. I, I remember once at my Melbourne Comedy Festival show and it's my brother's fault. My brother's a tradie, mm -hmm. right? So kind of trade? he's a, a concreter. Oh, so right, right, as right. as progressive Man, as I am, because I'm in the arts, even, he's a trade. Because I'm a wog, I was. I'm like that's very respectable. <laughs> yeah. Concrete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like concrete, man. Yeah, concrete. Concrete is, is a, concrete's very good. Yeah, he got the job, and and two days after, he just got chest hair. Right, he just immediately and started just, wearing yeah, wife yeah. beaters and gold Puts chain. Puts a fucking hanky over his head, like one of yeah. those Greek immigrants. Yeah, and is he like rich? Uh, yeah, he he's, crush, he's crushing it. Yeah, yeah, he's got the big Hilux, yeah. everything. <laughs> the Ford Raptor. Yeah, yeah, he's got custom trays <laughs> and he's lifted it and he's and got the loud like, exhaust. I actually don't know you that well in that regard. Like, are you completely and utterly incompetent or what? I am, I have, I'm on my learner's permit. I have no yeah. driver's license. I'm just... So were you guys close? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We aren't. Is he older brother or younger? He's younger. He's younger. Yeah, so we weren't that close when, when we were growing when I was like 15, we kind of drifted apart mm, a little bit, mm. but now we're very close. How many years apart? Uh, two years. Two years. Yeah, my yeah. brother and I are four, and we did have that middle period too. Where was that? When yeah. both of you are trying yeah. to become very yeah. different. Going your own way. Yeah. And the problem with a brother is, is that they know you so intimately that every yeah. time that you go through a phase, they're like, Pfft. Yeah. Who are you kidding? So you need to cut them out for a bit. Yes. As you go through this awkwardness. But now it's like, that's, he's my out and out like best friend. Yeah. Yeah, we're like very much the, like yeah, that. Yeah, they're the only person that, like, like that's the one that you can call up and yeah. cry with laughter at. Yeah. Because you're doing an impression of your mum <laughs> being a bitch. Yes. And it's the most therapeutic because it's like we had to get through our childhood together. Yeah. 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 But, like, my, brother's, my brother is, like, the, uh, my brother's, like, a real uh, capable, very, very liked. Yeah. Very sociable. Yes. Like he's into people. This is my brother. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, I, I listen, I can turn that on like mm. a sociopath, mm. but like, you, you need know, to recharge the battery. I need to recharge after. the battery. And also, my brother, who it just says some of the most savage things to me without meaning to, he goes, You know, the thing about you is, is that thousands of people like you, but no one really loves you. <laughs> he goes, That's like the world of comedians, isn't it? It's like you're obsessed with like getting the affection of people that you've never met, but you just ignore everyone that really matters. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's brutal. Uh, yeah. yeah, my my whole job, our whole job is no, no, no. I'll do the conversation. You just sit there mm. and, and give me the approved noise, but don't fucking say anything <laughs> because this is my hour. And sometimes it's going to be an hour and a half. You point me in the right direction by sound. And even if you're not liking it, yeah. I got paid for fifteen minutes, yeah. so fuck you. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing fifteen. Okay, so there, so what's the story with you at the moment? Because I, I I know you I know you've been. Uh, very, I would say sick, but it's not sick, is it? You had surgery. No, well, I was very oh, yeah. sick. Yeah. And did then... you have septicemia or anything? No, Any no, I had, I had a horrific sleep apnea. Right. Like I needed to, I needed the surgery just as lockdown started. And then it was two more years and then it was an emergency. I was so messaging it was like you four like, years. what camera should I buy? And yeah. 20 times you texted me the camera and I was just like, well, I am still looking for a camera. You're like, see above. Yeah, I just because I just I'm so incompetent, and then I just wanted to read some messages. I think this is amazing. Okay, this is what you said. 26th of May, 2022. Okay, heading into surgery tomorrow. Wonder what meds I'll get, and I said hopefully more powerful than my Oxy Five MG. If you do not use them more, is there a chance that you could lend me a script? <laughs> so immediately, I'm um, just a disgusting degenerate. I've never touched drugs. They could probably give me Panadol Plus, and it would work. Then you've gone. I'll fax you the script. Okay, and I said, so anyway, what's going on? What are you doing? And you go, I'm getting decapitated, whole upper jawbone detached and split in half, mm -hmm. then widened and reattached in a more forward position. I go, fucking hell. Anyway, what do you reckon of this camera? <laughs> so already... <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, so already no really, good luck. Re re like re re really supported, right? Yeah. Then you, then you go, uh, I go, what about Canon XA40? <laughs> it's like I know okay. every fucking camera. Okay. One day later, so I do write to you, good luck, brother. Oh, thank you. You write back to me, here we go, 2.30 in the morning. Amos Grill, ha, 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 you're a barbecue. I'm on a chair. <laughs> and I go, ha, 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 then you've sent me a video, so God knows Oh, what, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, what you've sent there. And then you, uh, you go, I've snuck boot polish in, oxy loophole, now I have a moustache. 
Oh, look at my dosage. My good friend Norman. <laughs> so you were fucking gone. But this is you. OxyNorm was the drug that you got put on. Oh, OxyNorm. Then you sporadically just send me messages going, Normie. <laughs> 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 then I did not talk to you for one year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Normie. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, so I blew it for a year. Now he's back. Welcome back. So what's the... And, and like you're, you're feeling... How do you feel when you... Because we haven't seen you around. Mm. And then you're back. Yeah. around the crew again How, did you feel because there a te- like is there a tendency to want a, a retreat do you love the private too much now because you know a lot of people yeah. say COVID the lockdown some people go oh, I prefer I learned that I'm more of a shut in you've been an extra shut in and now you're, yeah. now you're out in the real world again I am I have really embraced solitude yeah I feel like I've returned to myself hence the I feel like this again yeah 100, 100% like I uh, I was building and things were going really, really well. And I was like, I need a team. Mm. And then I hired a team and it, and it was really good and it really helped my career. But m- in my head, I was like, to be a good boss, I need to be there all the time. Mm. And it completely burned me out just being surrounded by people all the time. And yeah. I liked them, but being surrounded all the time was like this, crazy. This is when I went, I used to do your show with uh, Luke, right? Yes, and yeah. Yeah, man, you were like, you had like nine dudes running around. It was, it's, yeah, it was, it was wild. So there was the Luke and Lewis team, but then there was the Lewis Spears team. Uh-huh. So I was just hopping from one team to another, just permanently surrounded. And then also at the same time, I was fostering my girl's little brother. So it was like... What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was really ill. <laughs> oh my Lord. I also had you to sleep. You were fostering? For, yeah. Shit. Yeah, so that's hectic. And here I'm like, yeah, so like, you know, your brother's the capable one. Yeah. You know, okay, you're maybe. capable like me and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of fostered a child, but anyway. Yeah, so I'm a new, I was a... I, I How sh- old? Uh, oh, he he is 16 now. So we, we got my son when he was 14. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, uh, that's we, tough, tough, that though. was learning how to be a dad with with a, a fourteen year old was was hectic. Yeah, that's like you're a head coach of a football team that's like already got its ways. You know what I mean? Like you didn't get yeah. draft picks and go. This is the game plan. You're like, listen, you're already kind of a man. And also, I've like, never played man. football yeah. in my life. You're a man. You're a man. <laughs> I don't know how it works. You're already a man, basically. Yeah. What do you? I don't even know how you like get their respect. Yeah, that that was there. There was there's a there was a lot of inbuilt skills and yeah and because like at 14 it's like you're almost borderline like if it was the united states they'd just get on a greyhound bus and be like i'm starting a business in florida or something like cat williams mm, yeah you know like they wouldn't even go i'm gonna have another parent yeah yeah it was uh it was very very like uh it's difficult you yeah. know it's difficult but super rewarding like he's doing great now and, yeah you know proper proper like very very proud you of get to son. be a dad yeah, but you didn't have to change a diaper, and there is something wonderful about this. That there's there's positives and negatives for yeah. sure. No diapers. I don't didn't have to do the school drop off uh-huh. ever. Not that I could. I've got no license. <laughs> but you know, if if I had to do a drop off, uh-huh. that would have been a disaster. But it wasn't. You can walk to school. Look, man, it's very kind what you've done. But yeah. if I get a foster dad who couldn't drive me places, I'd be like, can we go back in the draft? Is there, yeah. is there anyone else? <laughs> yeah, put put me Are in the home. Fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the orphanage has a bus I'll minimum. take the shelter <laughs> like, yeah. we go through the drive through Maccas you're like you can walk mate yeah you're going through the front you <laughs> order <laughs> okay so you've had a lot going on yeah and th- and now do you talk about this in stand up or are you going I, more talking <clears throat> about the world well I uh, I feel like that show's being written because man I was so ill my brain didn't work uh-huh. so I if I'm being honest, and I can only say this now yeah. because the show's really good, uh-huh. but uh, it's the same show that I'm doing that I did last year at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, mm. and I wasn't well enough to tour it. I did it purely to pay for right. my new head, uh, and I couldn't say it at the time, but I wrote it in four days right, right, at the right, library right, right. as an emergency. And then you decided to go at the Buddhists. Yeah. And then they put a hex on you, no doubt. It's... Yeah, and now, and it didn't work, or yeah. it's working the opposite way. Have Tickets you, have you had any Shows lingering awesome. Buddhists? Completely gone. I'm going to I'm gonna put a, a YouTube video up about the right. protest, like recapping it, and that might kick it up a little bit, but as a whole, they're very forgiving. Because I heard through the curtain you do something with Zero, that was, that was very good, but it, uh, what a strange, of all the hate groups to have. That's, yeah, walking, that's... Walking, walking away with the Buddhists. Mm. 
And the fact that they are detach, like that they can't detach from the love of their Dalai Lama. He like, apologised. He agrees yeah. with me for a, for a religion that is about not attaching yourself to things. And, yeah, and being overly emotional. Yeah, you know, I thought it was a bizarre. It, it was. Grouping. It was. Cr- I didn't even know that the that I could make people that angry. It's the angriest. You know, the Prince Philip so thing jealous, was crazy yeah. viral. And oh, I remember watching it, being like. Fuck me! How do I get the Buddhists? Yeah. How do I get the Buddhists on board? Well, that's the thing. It was it was just a like a the joke that I wrote was it was like an exercise of like oh current news thing happened I'll write a joke do yeah, it yeah, put yeah. it out move on and then <laughs> two hundred people it's outside not, my but venue. But it's not like I don't know. It's, they don't have like a is there a Buddhist version of like the fatwa where it's a yeah. lifelong vendetta? Because if you push this off enough Muslims like mm. and you, and you get the fatwa put on you that's yeah. like License to kill on you yeah. forever. I, I I don't know if the Buddha would have the teachings. Why? Well, I, I also well, he got a lot Where, of money from the CIA, so well, maybe the Buddha did. The no, Dalai, Dalai Lama, Lama did. What was he getting money from the CIA for? Uh, because something to do with uh, he with was China? just fucking with China. Yeah. Like because this was at the time when right. Tibet, I believe, wasn't China yet. Uh-huh. You know, because well, Tibet's Tibet, but China says it's China. It's like it's like what they want Taiwan to yeah, be. Yeah, Mountain Taiwan. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah, but they they won. They got yeah, it. Attitude Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. So he was getting like uh, crazy money from the CIA to just be disruptive. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I think just be like, don't be, don't let Tibet be China. Well, he's a nice. Yeah, he's a nice f- uh, face. Mm. Like it's a, it's a it's a the Dalai Lama. Yeah. So like it's an Asian face. Yeah. To say that this isn't just an Anglo campaign against the Chinese. Yeah. So Which, could, it, but the idea of the Dalai Lama getting <coughs> suitcases of money, it's really funny. <laughs> like, and I was talking about that on stage. It's right. like it's yeah. It, it'd be like Jesus getting yeah. money from CIA. Yeah. No. The, yeah. The CIA. It, it's like the, there's like the the Persian Empire or something is giving money to Jesus because they're like he's agitating the Romans. Yeah. And Jesus is like man, it was really really exhausting to have to make all those fish. Now I can just buy them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of performing yeah. miracles. Yeah. That, that'd be money. like the 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 billionaire being like more more downy jokes. <laughs> you know. Strings. They're giving money yeah. to Jesus. Yeah. Right. So you got uh, you got rinsed on that. And now look, the truth is, is that. Um, the Dalai Lama's failed then because John mm. has taken, he has taken everything. Well, like I if think... it was any other leadership yeah, and Tibet was taken like that, he'd step down. Yeah. If he had any courage, but he let his people down. Well, I think, that, like I've thought about this a lot. I think that the protest that I got, mm. right, because all Tibet, pretty much all Tibetan uh, Buddhists, because there's Buddhists and then there's Tibetan Buddhists with yeah. like different, it's like Catholicism, Christianity, right. like he's the Pope basically. Uh, all pretty much all Tibetan Buddhists are either first, second, or third gen refugees who have been oppressed by China. Right. So that protest, them protesting me, is kind of like you know when you get in a fight with your girlfriend, uh-huh. but it's really about this because about she's something, hungry. About something else. You know, you were a weak point that they could go after her there. They could finally yell at a person. Uh-huh. Like they're really <laughs> angry at the CCP. But, but they're not winning that one. They're not winning that one. Where, where do you protest? Mm. You know, at and, Gina and, Reinhardt's house? And you might not understand the, uh, the answer to this, because uh, but what's Fao Long Gong about then? <laughs> I don't understand that <laughs> at all. Still, uh, every time I walk around a CBD of Australia, yeah. there's a woman in tears yelling about Fao Long Gong. And I, I'm like... Is that I, what they're yelling about? I, 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 haven't even, I haven't even paid enough attention to them I, to I, I, I always walk past them and they, don't, they can't really speak great English and they're yelling about the Fao Long Gong. And I'm like, oh, I want to be upset with you, but I don't... Is that all the organ I think it's the, basically that the CCP is stealing organs. Yeah. 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 They, they steal the organs and then like on sell them to more elite members in China. So is Fao Long Gong a guy? Or Fao, is that I think the... Fao Long Gong's a group. Of organ harvesters. Of people who have been, who are getting their organs taken out. I think the Falun Gong are the ones that are getting... Right. I don't, obviously, again, I don't yeah. understand, but I support the Falun Gong. Or you I don't the, support Or them. I don't support the Falun Gong. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. But organs belong inside the people who need them and mm. want them. And you have no right to cut out the organ from someone else mm. to sell it to the highest bidder. Even if they need it and, more, and want it more than the I, original owner? I do, yeah, even, even if. Yeah. And even if... That even if you're really smart mm. and rich, yeah. and you're like, fuck that cunt's wasting his liver. Yeah. It'd be better if I had it. How about this? Still not okay. Counterpoint, what if you're very powerful and the organ that you won't 
that you want belongs to an a ethnic poor group. person, an ethnic group. Yeah, then you just take it. Um, <laughs> but how good are you at digging a grave? Because <laughs> you're gonna have to make it big. Yeah, because there's a lot of them gonna get. Yeah, this is fucking grim. Um, yeah, this. No, no, but like I have a game show called the Falun Gong Show. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a talent show where they get to keep their organ if they're funny enough. <laughs> Today you're playing for a kidney. I'm going to get another Asian protest <laughs> at the end of this podcast. This is kind of what I came on here to do. Yeah. Is I want you to be randomly doing a show in Melbourne. <clears throat> and then there's a woman crying and you're like, what have I done? And she's just showing this podcast episode. And you're like, for fuck's sake, Amos. You know what was wild about the, the pro... And I talk about this in my bit about the protest was... We planned to get there at like an hour before they did because uh. the cops called us. There were undercovers everywhere in the venue. It was hectic. Um, and they told us when the protest was going to start. So like, you should get there before that. So uh, we did. Uh. But I'm a comedian. So I'm late. And we pull up next to the protest and I'm like, run the red, run the red. Because we're stuck at the lights. They swarm the car to show their posters. Mm. They have no idea who I am. I just wave at them and then they wave back and... I give them the thumbs up and they're like, oh, oh they you. just, they, they don't, they have no idea who the fuck well, did I am. They, were they expecting you to be, I think like, it, honestly, microphone? I think the vibe was like a local church uh-huh. or something showed up. Like the, the, whoever was in charge of that group yeah, of yeah, people, you have to show up. It was yeah. like, we're showing up the protest. There was like children there and women there, <laughs> like literally like five year olds going, Lewis Spears apologized. They don't know what's going on. Yeah, the kids are like, where are we going? And the parents are like, oh, I don't know. The church says we got to get some comedians. I think it there. was like that that vibe of like, oh, it'll get us points in the community yeah, if we, we show up. We won't be able to go. But what we, because what's their restaurant they have? Is that theirs, Crossways? Is that Buddhist or is I, that something it's, else? I think it is. Well, isn't it Hare Krishna's? That's Hare Krishna's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an ignorant man. Yeah. <laughs> So, they're all in robes they're, they're, and they're vaguely ro- orange. Robed and sort of cymbal instruments walking around. The Harry Christians seem okay. <clears throat> they seem, I love their music. Yeah. I love it when they walk They past. actually uplift me. In a, uh, people make fun of them, but to me, they're like a sort of, it's Christmas all the time with them. There's, they're going around they're dancing they're car- and caroling. singing. It's, they're, that's pretty good. They're 20, that's better than flagellants. You right? know? They're 24 7, 365 carols. <laughs> <laughs> There's something sweet about that. That's got to be fun. They get, you get on a roll. Like, because George Harrison was a Hare Krishna as well, was he? Was he? he? Or I've never he, heard he him just, say that. He would just sing it in songs. I didn't know that. He sings... He definitely, um, let me, Jamie, pull that shit up. Where's, Where's Jamie? Sucks that you don't have a Where's Jamie. young Jamie? When are you going to get a fucking Jamie? you got to get some resources back, bro. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I've learned. Going back to all of that is what I've learned is like, I do want to build up again, but I need to protect my solitude There's, for my own sanity. Yeah, he has a song called Hare Krishna, but maybe it's just about them. Harrison continued to embrace the Hare Krishna tradition, particularly Japa yoga chanting with beads, and became a lifelong devotee. Right. See? Good on it. Yeah, and that doesn't get out there enough. You know what I realised halfway through you reading off that guy's Wikipedia page? I was thinking of Harrison Ford. <laughs> and, I, and you were like, it wasn't Harrison Ford a Hare Krishna? And I was like, I don't think so. He sung songs, and I'm going, Harrison Ford has an album? Just the idea of Han Solo as a Hare Krishna. You know what it was? It was you put George Harrison, and I, my brain went George Lucas Harrison Ford. <laughs> That's the most confused I've ever been. Fuck that would. If they found out that that Harrison Ford was a Hare Krishna, they would probably be more shocking than the Weinstein case. They'd be like, "He's what? Yeah, he cares about something. <laughs> he's in he's in robes walking around West Hollywood, <laughs> singing songs. That is." That's dark, but the Falun Gong, mm. as I, just, I just wanted to get this right, because I looked down the barrel of the camera and said I supported the ha- Falun Gong. <laughs> That's <laughs> the clip, by the way, from the I was, a, I was a little worried. Falun Gong books were banned from further publication in July 96, and official news announced began criticizing the group as a form of feudal superstition whose theistic orientation was at odds with the official ideology of the national agenda. Yeah, but what is it about? Mm. Falun Gong means practice of the law will. I still don't get it. I think it's similar to the Tibetan Buddhists. It's just the Chinese it's about, government it's doesn't about like any belief the key system. vital energy. Yeah. Theories about flow and function. Okay. You, you, you talk to the audience. I'm going to do I think... Falun Gong organs. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go back to the Falun Gong show. <laughs> that was a really good bit. That was a very good bit of the Falun Gong yeah. show. So anyway, it would do very well in China. I bombed so hard last night that... It made me laugh. It was one of those, it was, I feel like every comedian, one out of every hundred gigs, you're allowed to blame the audience, 100%. Oh, 
Well, in Perth, you can do that. Uh, you can be batting 50 from 50 50 there, whether it's you or the <laughs> yeah, audience there. That is, that is true. Now, hold on. Okay. Allegations of forced organ harvesting from mm -hmm. Falun Gong practitioners have been at paramount concern to the international community. This is also, true. Also, Falun Gong are at the same time oppressed and harvesting well, they, organs. No, no, the Falun Gong are the ones where the, the people are uh, stealing their They're getting organs. harvested. They're getting harvested okay. because they're seen as a sort of healthy people who are also uh, on ostracized by the government. Oh, so they're like vegans. So they they're, they're, they're have vegans. Cuz cuz if I'm if I'm an all powerful government official and I mm. need a liver, I know who I'm going to. I'm going to the vegan to get it. So that makes sense. Does make sense. Okay. In 1998, the country reported 3596 kidney transplants had taken place without any paperwork. <laughs> Jeez, stop it, China. This is why I got protested because that's horrific. And what what are we going to do? Who complain to the Chinese yeah, government? Yeah. They'll go. They won't even you, say my, we're not doing it. They just won't answer. My favorite clip of all time mm. uh, about China is the ambassador to the UK on yeah. the BBC. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when they had the uh, their the Uyghur Muslims? Yes. And there was that clip of them with shaved heads. Yes. And they were putting them onto trains to move them around. Yes, it was in, just like just the Holocaust in 4K. Right, in the Uyghur area. Yeah. Right? And they're playing it. And they've got the ambassador there. And the guy from the BBC is like, Mr. Ambassador, these are certainly distressing scenes. Why don't you tell the viewers, what, what, what are we seeing here? And he goes, you see there that the Uyghur area in that northern province of China is the most beautiful in the world. That train goes through some very beautiful <laughs> holiday areas because China has some most amazing fields. He's doing tourism. He, he, did, he did basically Chinese getaway yeah. while they're accused of having a holocaust. And they're like, but you must address these people. They are people going to see beauty. See beauty. <laughs> Work makes you free. <laughs> it's like... It's one of the darkest clips in the world. Yeah, Thank so dystopian. I, I, you know what I would love to see? I would love to see his heart rate while he was doing <laughs> the tourism. Because you know President G is like at home. He probably has like a pacemaker inside every one of his ambassadors and he's yeah. just sitting there with a the red button. Yeah. If the guy's like, look, it's not a great look. We've got some issues with him, but we're not... Ca <laughs> 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 and you know what he does with those organs? He gives them to the Falun Gong as a gift. That's good, yeah. It doesn't explode the heart. It just holds it, it and, and keeps it nice and safe. It freezes. It just starts to freeze, goes on ice. Maybe President G just has like significant organ failure himself mm. and to stay alive. He's had 3,000 livers. Him. They all go to him. Yeah. That's... Or maybe he's, he's eating them. It's a delicacy <laughs> over there. Well, you know what? If you are a dystopian leader and you don't have a taste for the kidney of a very, mm. very specific ethnic group, you're not doing it right. You know, I would be very concerned if if footage showed up of those Uyghurs getting shaved and put on trains and then six months later they get off the trains and they're very obese. Yeah, yeah. It's like foie gras. <laughs> it's just, he's just forcing rice down their mouth <laughs> through funnels. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. would be that would be distressing. That's not good. If I was uh yeah uh, what do you think of like the speaking of the foie gras? Are you where are you at with the animals? And, I think and it's horrific. <laughs> I think I think it's I think I look at it and I go, how good is is a good like a good liver? Because like, is that what you're eating their liver? It's like yeah, fatty like liver. It's a, fat, it's a fatty liver. It's just like we're living in some pretty dope times food wise, and it's like, is it better than like a packet of Smith's cheese and onion? Crisps. It, it, like how no, much? Yeah. Do you need? Yeah, maybe to... back in medieval times, it fucking slapped. Like before, like when salt was was, when there was... more valuable than gold. Right, right, exactly. I and the spices it. and everything. But it's like, God, we don't need to be. You, you don't need. To no, do we don't. I can leave a McDonald's cheeseburger like under the front seat of a car right. for three weeks and then put it in a microwave and it'll still be quite. It'll nice. only be fractionally worse yeah. than foie gras. Yeah. So like, why do I need? What about the ortolan bird? What's that? It's just, it's, you know, that's that special dish, the uh, the autolon that the French aristocracy used to eat. And now they're only allowed to legally eat it one day. It's a tiny bird. Mm. It's like this big. And they get it and they have like a pot of uh, liqueur yeah. that, that's boiling. Oh, and maybe I've heard They of this. put the bird in basically alive and it and it 
is completely fried inside of this liqueur. And then to eat it, you have to put a napkin over your head. Oh, because it's... they say that you, one, it enhances the flavour, but two, it's because they, don't, they think God shouldn't be watching what you're doing right now because it's so cruel. And the French put a oh napkin over it and they just bite it in one, they, the whole bird, one crunchy bite. That's, yeah. And it's been banned everywhere and the French are furious about it. Like yeah, I think, that's well, how culture, can you be angry? <laughs> hey, don't ban the thing that God himself isn't allowed to look at. But like, to me, that's such, such a fun thing that like the French culture wars, mm. while we're debating over, you know, God knows what over here, like, you know, Australia Day. Yeah. Or the French... When should have, we have our barbecue? The, the French have some far-right guy that's just like, the Hotelon, <laughs> this country has gone crazy. When I was a boy, that one How do you even German. know I'm eating the bird? God himself hasn't <laughs> seen it. So, so but I love that they're allowed like one, one, a one year. day, like one dirty little pleasure. But like, how do they police that? Well, they, you know, I mean, there's a lot of black market all along. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. only allowed to be sold I, maybe a couple of days beforehand. Uh, but like, I ate whale last year. Mm. How do you feel about that? Well, I was in Norway. I didn't know, but Norway are like the Japanese. Right. They don't whale on the docks. Mm. And I was like, is this, like, is this, because it's everywhere. And they're mm. like, would you like some whale as a starter? I'm like, is this no good? And they're like, it's only the minky. What's that mean? It's a minky whale. They're like, it's not endangered. Oh. We've been eating whale. And, and you're like, all right, all right, like, I gave it a go. And it was the same thing where I was like, yeah, it's all right. It's like uh, the, all those Look, types it's, of it's foods, like it's, it's, it's like something it's, that you have to, <laughs> you used to have to have eat. Have to eat, yeah. But I was like, it's, you know, I'll, I'll tick it off the bucket list. Like, but it wasn't... yeah, the whale stuff is like, if, if uh, like, you think about when it first started, you had to get 100 men on 50 different boats with big sticks with the rocks yeah. <laughs> on the end of them to kill. Like, if you're doing that, you have to do that because it will feed your family for months. Because we don't need to do that anymore. Because oh, I used to. You know, and people would be like, that's cruel, this kind of food, that kind of food. The reactionary in me is always like, oh, that's the way we've always done it. Mm. And then I see that we're doing like the lab made beef. And I, like, this no. is what I was just going to say. I think vegans are 100% correct. Absolutely I know, right. I know that they're. But right. I'm waiting for the 3D printed meat. Yeah. I can't do it. I know, like, it's one of those, you know, we go, like, we, we, we look back and I was on the right side of history. Yeah. It is with me with the animals where I go, yeah, they probably will be like, you committed mass genocide of chickens every day mm. and you all thought that was fine. Um, but then I look at the, some of this like lab meat and it is yeah. getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. But I was reading an article about it and they're saying, you know, they're going to make lab beef. Mm. And I think that's a mistake. Do you think? Because what I think, I would go with endangered species mm. because right now we can't eat panda and you yeah, can't, that and you can't like? we can't yeah. eat well. And you, we can't eat like a lion. Mm. Really, that, that's not available to us. Yeah. Or like bald eagle. Yeah. And so if I was one of those companies, I would clone their flesh. And then at the supermarket, you yeah. can either eat beef, mm, boring. Yeah. Or there's another section as endangered species section. That'd be good. And it's just a fucking slab of and whale. And that, that's there. like doubly effective because while they're like, you know, they'll start with just a nice thigh mm -hmm. of, of like a white rhinoceros. Yeah. But eventually, if that becomes profitable and we like eating thigh right. of right, white, you get all white the rhinoceros, right. they'll make the whole thing. Make them be some kind of like, yeah, the rhino foot. You know, actually. And then know. they'll make the brain and the soul. You know what? What about, mm -hmm. you know how there's always like Jamie Oliver's, yeah. you know, pot roast? Yeah. What about just fucking give me Jamie Oliver? That's good. Like, like let's have Jamie clone his flesh. Yeah. And it's Jamie Oliver presents my thigh. Well, how about... Uh, in the Coles, so you have Coles and Woolies, they want to compete with of each course. other. Coles will do Falun Long Gong organs <laughs> and Woolies will do Uyghur kidneys. Dude, to bring Falun Long, why don't we just get the CCB yeah. meat printers and the Falun exactly. Gong can live? That's what's sold. Dude, you and I have come up with this tonight. We should actually get the CIA yeah. to give money. To the CCP. Well, the Dalai Lama will die soon, so that'll free up some budget. <laughs> budget. And we start printing mm. organs so yeah. that the Chinese stop killing the Falun Gong. Yeah. And I think what we've done here mm -hmm. is a persecuted group by the CCP mm -hmm. owes you for your kindness raising awareness of Falun Gong, which balances out all those nasty things you said about the Buddhists. This is good. 
So, and if this works, they'll go from protesting me to, to supporting just you around doing the world. a rally in my, <laughs> supporting me. You're going to end up on some chair <laughs> in a ceremony. In a where... tunnel underneath <laughs> New York. <laughs> yeah. And I say, Lewis Spears saved a foul long gone. Yeah. And if that good. isn't a better way to end this episode, as I run off to go and do my fucking show, I don't know what is. I'm Amos Gill, foul on gong, you've got my support. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, when I got in the elevator to come up to your hotel room, I didn't think I'd talk about foul on gong. Tonight. Me neither. I had no <laughs> idea real... what we were going to do. I hadn't heard of foul on gong. And you know what? This is the only podcast that I'm doing all Perth Fringe, and I'm stoked with that. <laughs> That's is... great. It's a good bit. <laughs> the other weird thing, this is so strange, you just go to a dude's house. I'm on the casting couch. Because we know each other, but not that well. And mm. it is, it is, I'm just like, going into your hotel room and there's just cameras set up and we're like all right should we have a conversation where we're just on a chair facing Amos goes, the so camera? what's the vibe of the podcast i'm like i don't know man we'll just just wing it yeah 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 like i'm like show should i do like stories or like are we gonna do the news and you're like i don't know man just just talk about organ harvesting yeah i was kind of like you know when you know when bill burr does a guest podcast and it gets way less views than a solo podcast yeah, yeah. that's that's this that's you know when like in the comments everyone's like no more guests <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry, but that, that's gonna happen. Oh, and absolutely. they're wrong. I like the guest. Yeah, ones. It's like it's like when I watch the Tim Dillon podcast. Yeah. And underneath that people are like, I fucking hate that guy. Bring back Ben. <laughs> Where's Ben? Where's Ben Avery? Actually, get Ray Cump. <laughs> that's yeah. a real deep cut for you. Yeah, audience. no, that's I do I do really like with with my solo podcasts. There's always one allowed guest yeah, that yeah. the audience likes, yeah. and then everything else is just yeah. get them off. Well, you know what that is, though. That's like you've got your regular set of friends, mm. okay, and then you always bring like a new guy around. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Man, this is it's." That's you, Prince, Prince it, Andrew it, at it, Epstein's <laughs> Island, and you're like, "It's not that I didn't like him. It's that like I don't like you around him." I want you mm. to be like how you normally are, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've ruled this for many people, and you'll have to wait till next Sunday. Uh, um, if, and if you're in a, in a, in like a very small niche comedy clubs in towns like Cincinnati, or Illinois, <laughs> Springfield, Missouri, yeah, do come out and support me over there. Um, and and if you're uh, and if you're here in Australia, I, I'm I'm going to be at the Adelaide Fringe, not, not nowhere else. Yeah, just Adelaide go, Fringe. Go see Amos. He's uh, I think one one of the greats, and uh, oh, we'll I, I I will be following you to the states as soon as he, as as possible. I'm here for the healthcare only. Thanks, mate. Good, Good to luck. see you, mate. Awesome.